And hello again, everybody, and welcome to The Voice of Business. This is the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce monthly podcast here on Business Radio X. I'm your host, Mike Salmon, and as usual, we have three Gwinnett Chamber members joining us here in the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio. We are joined by Nancy McGill. She is the owner of Cartridge World Lawrenceville. Stephen Tomlinson is the managing partner with Level 7 Facility Services, and Jamie Jones is the senior marketing manager with Duke Realty. So we want to welcome all three of our guests. And we're going to start with you, Nancy. Good morning. Great to see you. Good morning, Mike. Good to see you, too. Always great to see Nancy. Nancy, you've been on our show before, and you are back. You are a chamber member. But before we get into the chamber, let's talk about Cartridge World Lawrenceville. Talk about the services and products you provide. Okay, Mike. We have a retail location in Lawrenceville, but we work with businesses. And we sell ink cartridges, laser cartridges, wide format cartridges, postage machine cartridges we also sell printers we do repairs on printers also Um, we usually save businesses and individuals about 30 percent off buying their cartridges from us than they would get at the big box stores we have 100 percent guarantee on all of our product so you will find that they work just the same as an original cartridge Um, we've been in business almost 16 years Um, we have enjoyed being a chamber member and it really did jump start because i was a brand new company in georgia for a franchise nobody knew what we did so it's been a fun ride and Mm -hmm. um COVID has made life interesting (laughs) so we worked through that we can provide curb service still but we do have it open and safe for people to come to our store and we do free delivery for businesses 16 years now you've been in business yes so let's go back 16 years to when you first started what inspired you to start your business well i was researching a business to own and i found this there were several franchises. Most of them did either ink cartridges or laser cartridge replacements. But I felt like, well, I can do this and do both and provide for everybody. And nobody was really doing both. And compatibles were new. You didn't have the people doing refills and all that at the time. So it was something that I thought people are already buying. And we can also help the environment by keeping cartridges out of the landfill and save everybody money. Great, great. So started the business. It's been going well 16 years now in Lawrenceville in the the service area. I mean, with COVID and everything, t- typically people would come to your retail location. I know you work with a lot of businesses as well. Talk about your service area, the businesses that you do work with. Is it all of Metro Atlanta or more just of the north side? Um, we can work with any businesses anywhere. In fact, we have quite a few businesses that have locations out of state that we can ship to. So if they're local, we try to personally deliver a lot of the time and just make sure everything's going good. We give a lot of advice on printer issues or making sure they have the right printer printing the right things and the right duty cycle for them so we can really service anyone anywhere we have out-of-state customers and in-state and we do majority of our business in Gwinnett County but that's just from being a local active person in Gwinnett and well speaking of active and you've touched upon it already with the Gwinnett Chamber uh, how long ago did you join and, and why did you make the decision to join the Chamber well I joined right when I opened my business so we actually opened the store the end of December of 2004 and I was a chamber member January the beginning in 2005 and have kept going ever since then Um, nobody knew what Cartridge World was it was a new franchise so I did a lot of networking I did um, tables display tables at almost every chance I had really just to educate people on what Cartridge World could do for them and provide for them. And I felt like the chamber was a way to get in front of the right people, and it was true. It really did jumpstart my business and has been a big reason of why we are the top store in Georgia because of having the chamber connections and working it. There you go. Well, I think it's important, too, because you mentioned sponsoring some events and tables and things like that. And A lot of folks will join a chamber and then just expect the business to come to them, but you still have to go out there, get your name known, and, and kind of work it, if you will. Yes. One thing I give advice when people are new members, because I'm also an ambassador for the chamber, is people like to do business with people they know but they need to get to know you. So I always recommend, you know, pick out somebody to go have coffee with or these days do a Zoom call with them and find out more about their business and in turn they'll want to find out more about yours and you're going to get those good business connections. If they can't do business with you, they don't have a need, they may know somebody else that does that they can refer to you. So it just kind of snowballs. So I think being active is very important because people do want to get to know you and along the way you get to know a lot of good business people and you make a lot of good new friends. 
Well, absolutely. And, and, and relationships, a lot of times, equal sales. Like if I'm looking, when I when I get my cartridges, I'm going to go to Nancy. I get my insurance through a person I met through the chamber. I do my plumbing through somebody. So it's all about relationships. And you seem to have picked up on that early on. Well, I think it's very nerve-wracking when you go to your first big event, which right now we're not having as, that as much. We're doing a lot um, digital, but we are still doing some in-person things with the chamber. But the chamber educates you on how to network, and they have a lot of good education things on marketing, how to do social media. So it's more than just sales. You do get your uh, other employees involved. They have young professionals group for, you know, they say, I guess 40 or under but um, there's groups that they have for just women although men are welcome and they usually are very well received because there's not very many but there's a lot that the chamber offers besides just networking um, you know to do with education and ways to just really improve your business improve yourself personally and help your employees improve and you know keep going with the new changes with everything that goes on. We're talking with Nancy McGill she is the owner of Cartridge World Lawrenceville. Exactly where in Lawrenceville are you located? So we're at 911 Duluth Highway, which is the corner of Duluth Highway and Lawrenceville Swanee Road. We're in a public strip center. There's a Nukes restaurant and a Poppy's restaurant a lot of people know of. Um, but you can also visit our website, which is cartridgeworldlawrenceville.com. And you can order online or you can give us a call or you can email us. We'll do it any way that's best for you. For that person out there who's thinking about starting their own business like you did nine years ago, I'm going to ask you this question. What advice would you have given yourself? What would the Nancy of today tell the Nancy nine years ago? What kind of advice would you have given yourself now that you've had a successful business for almost a decade? Well, I think you do have to get out and educate people on what your services are, and you need to make your services slightly unique. So we have one program that's a no-cost printer program for businesses. We actually provide the printer and the maintenance for free as long as they just buy the cartridges from us. It helps them. With Which are already 30% off. Yes. They're about so from the big box stores yes. that you mentioned. Yes. So it's a win-win for everybody. We try to partner with people and not just sell people. Um, most of our customers we know by name. Um, you know, we try to give them a lot of different advice. We tell people to call us if they're trying to print something that's kind of unique. Maybe they're doing a lot of labels and there are settings that you want to change on your printer. So we help keep printers healthy and so they last a little bit longer for people. But I think just being active at the chamber, I would highly recommend anyone starting a business because there's a lot of things they can help you with as a new business owner. And that would be my advice. Just popped in my head. You're not selling cartridges. You're selling peace of mind. That is true. We want to be the one place you call for any printing needs. Right, because I can tell you the, 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 the four-letter words that have come out of my mouth when the printer here doesn't work, I don't want that to happen. So yeah, There's pain points all the time, and we want to alleviate the pain points for you. There you go. I, I know it's important to you. You mentioned the chamber, but also being part of the community and giving back to the community. Are there other ways that you've given back? Um, yes, we actually... Um, are involved in two recycling events in Gwinnett County each year and we just volunteer and we collect empty cartridges and printers um, for anyone that wants to bring them in the county. We give discounts to military, seniors, educators. I participate in several civic organizations. I'm part of Rotary Club of Lawrenceville. I'm on the United Way Board, Women's Advisory Council for Northside Hospital, and I'm also an ambassador for Gwinnett Chamber. Might have been easier to ask you what you're not doing these days. <laughs> so, uh, Nancy, for those that would like to find out more, let, let's, let's, let's give the retail location one more time, but also a website so people can find out more about your services. So the address is 911 Duluth Highway, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Our phone number is 770-995-4465, and you can reach us on our website, cartridgeworldlawrenceville.com. And is there going to be a big 10-year party coming up anytime soon? Sounds like a good plan, but we need to get through the COVID first. <laughs> good idea. It might if, if we wait for this COVID thing, then there might be an eleven-year party. That's true. By the time that rolls, Nancy, great to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me, Mike. Nancy McGill with Cartridge World Lawrenceville here on the Voice of Business on Business Radio X. Our next chamber member is Stephen Tomlinson from Level Seven Facilities Services. Stephen, great to meet you. Likewise, thank you. I think a lot of folks like me have heard about Level Seven 
facility services, but not might not be exactly sure what you do. So why don't you explain the services that you provide? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you. It's a, a little bit of a generic name. We, we intentionally made it so because we, we do provide a, a broad array of services uh-huh. and we didn't want to be any one thing to one uh it didn't want to be sort of pigeonholed as w- one provider when we have gives you room to grow it does yeah it does and uh you got to be careful uh you know you don't want to water down the brand but uh we are primarily a commercial and industrial cleaning company and, and janitorial is our bread and butter but you can imagine that uh 2020 has made things pretty interesting for us um we we lost a lot of our business when covid hit and uh it, uh because everything just shut down one of our biggest customers is mercedes benz stadium for instance and and state farm arena and, and and other office buildings that just simply aren't operating people are operating you know working out of, out of their homes right and so we um uh, we, we saw the writing on the wall and and uh uh, picked up the, the the technology, leaned into it really hard, learned as much as we could about disinfectant, cleaning and misting, and all the various options of which there are countless you could imagine. And uh, and so when I say janitorial is our bread and butter, I, I, that has always been the case for the past eight years. But um, you know this year it's a little bit different. Um, janitorial I think will always have a disinfectant component to it moving forward. Um, even after the pandemic is settled down and the dust settles, which we all hope and ha- we all hope happens yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, but however, it's it's been it's been a wild ride, uh, and and uh, we we've uh, created a lot of new relationships over the past several months, and, and uh, so we commercial cleaning is is uh, who we are as a company. What uh, that's our primary service, but disinfectant services have have really kind of taken front and center lately so. well well like a lot of businesses you've had to pivot a little bit as far as what you're you're offering but but i would think once we get through this when when the the, the business comes back the stadiums and the arenas that you've mentioned that you, that business would, would thrive it's almost a double-edged sword now because more and more people we need to make sure we are definitely disinfected definitely cleaned no it's true and and you know the name of the game for us i mean i'll, I'll say this I, I, a lot of people are uh, a lot of people are trying to cash in on the pandemic, and we see a lot of that. It, and and that is not our play at all. We want long-term relationships. We have a, a very you know a, a several very cost-effective and reasonably priced options for for disinfecting uh, services. And um, in, in a lot of times we get the question like, well, why are you guys bidding, you know, here? And and somebody else gives me a bid that's like ten times as high. What are y'all you know What are y'all not doing? We say, well, we're, we're not gouging you. We we want the long-term relationship, uh, and, and so that's um, you know we're we're in a position where we we can offer these services at a reasonable price, and our, and our margins are still good, um, but we're not hanging our hat on uh, trying to play off people's fears. That that is not who we are. Uh, so we we're building these relationships and making sure that that we're a resource that's valuable that we can be there for the long term play off someone's fears nobody would do that right <laughs> no not at oh, all goodness. never so you're a managing partner so yes. uh you started the company with one or more other partners yes uh, how long ago was that and and what got you into this field well i uh, actually got into the commercial cleaning business uh in 2009 in savannah uh and and what got me there was that i had gotten my uh my backside handed to me by the recession <laughs> in, uh, in uh, you know doing some some uh, flipping houses and and remodeling and you know had took some took some chances with some speculative real estate stuff and uh got humbled uh <laughs> and so uh, i was like okay well i you know and luckily i was not so far into that world that i uh you know got completely clobbered but enough to make me think well, what's a, what is a there's no such thing as recession proof business right but there are re- recession resistant business mm-hmm. models and I, I had a little bit of a some familiarity with uh, commercial cleaning and, and contract jan- janitorial services and and um, it, it seemed like a great thing to get into and it, it seemed like in particular at the time Savannah was lacking in that and, and, and needed a good provider so um, that's where I got started and then uh, I moved to Atlanta in 2012 to get married, and uh, and so I and had an opportunity to sell the Savannah operations and just start the business model over here, having learned some things not to do and some things to continue, you know. Uh, right. And and so level seven took off uh, pretty quickly. I, I, I got in with uh, some some smart guys, 
and um, you know, we we were all on the same page about what really matters, and uh, and it's going very well. We've been at it for eight years now, so. As a, a sports fan, I got to ask you: How did you get the Mercedes Benz deal and the <laughs> State Farm? Is that the that's the new name? Yeah, yes, yeah. it was Phillips Arena. How did you get that business? Uh, it's a long story that I'll try to distill because okay. I, I, I know we don't have much time. But uh, we we were originally called in by um, HHRM, who was the contractor that that built the stadium, and they were uh, about a week away of uh, from having to, to turn it over and the, the the first event and everything was right down to the wire and they had a pressure washing vendor that had somehow failed them pretty miserably. And, uh, and, and so they needed to get the place ready for this event. And they, we, Dave, my partner and I got a call on Monday and they said, can you come down here and have a look at this place? And, and so we, we came and, and walked and it was, you know, it was a disa- total disaster. And, um, they asked us if we could have, uh, about 60 or 70 people and 25 pressure washers and pressure wash the entire stadium from top to bottom by Friday and we said sure we can do that yeah absolutely that's not a problem and then when you walked away you're like how are we going to do this absolutely and so we didn't sleep for a few days but we 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 did we did what we said we would do and uh and and uh one thing led to another and 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 we just ended up kind of sticking around because we kept doing what we said we were going to do and ended up taking on a lot more responsibilities as time went on. So. That may not seem like much, but just doing what you say you're going to do is a, is a big a thing long these way. days. That's true. How how big are you now? How many places before the pandemic? I guess hit. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, the pandemic has, has introduced us to so many more new relationships. Uh, and, and, and like I was saying earlier, I mean, the name of the game for us is is not to just be a disinfectant solution for for people that are looking for misting or disinfected surface cleaning but to uh, become a long-term provider for them. So it's, you know, we want their janitorial business. And, and, and uh, so at any rate, uh, in answer to your question, um, we have um, we have probably about 250 people that we cut checks to every two weeks. Um, and we, our biggest customers are, well, not now, but Mercedes-Benz State, right, typically. Right, right, right. Uh, we, do, we do work for DHL. they got a very large facility south of town. We have janitorial cleaners there around the clock. And Americold is a Kroger distribution center, uh, and, and they keep us really busy as well. Um, the Cab County Judicial Facilities, and among many others. So when did you move to Atlanta again? 2012. That's what I thought you said. So, so congratulations, growing the business from, from really nothing, I guess, at the beginning, uh, selling the Savannah operation, starting here from nothing and growing it. Congratulations. That's a great success story, Stephen. Thank you. Um, you're here today because you're a member of the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce. How long have you been a member and why did you make the decision to become a member? Well, I was um, not as wise as Nancy. I, <laughs> I didn't jump right in immediately, although everyone said I should. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not someone who is a naturally networky kind of guy. I mean, it, I enjoy people. I like talking to people. But it's one of those things that was always in the back burner of my mind. Like, ah, I'll get around to it. I got, I got a business to run right now, you know. Um, however, if I could go back in time, I will say that I would have joined earlier because as soon as we did, which was uh, summer of 2018, so just over two years ago, um, and man, I mean, it's, it's, it's made a world of difference in our business and it's, you know, to Nancy's point earlier, you, you make friends and, and, uh, and, and it's not just about business connections. You, you meet people that you want to hang out with and, mm-hmm. um, I, I you know, would have done it a lot sooner. And you've taken it to the next level too, because you've done some table sponsors and things like that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you, you've seen some, some results, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it's, a, you you got to get the, 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 the word out there, of course, and, and let people know who you are, particularly if you have an ambiguously titled name like we do. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Um, but but you, you had some pretty good you know pro, uh, products that you put out there. One of your tables recently, I was at a thing, and I picked up a little thing that you clean your, your phone or computer with, which is really good to sanitize it. So it's it kind of plays along with, with the janitorial services. Yep. So that's really cool. Uh, what else are you guys doing? I know you give back to the community. What are the other ways that you're involved in the community? Well, we, um, we, we do try to give back when we can, and we, we, it's a good team-building exercise for us, too, when we can get our people away from their desks or out of their regular jobs and, and, and doing something together. And so, um, you know, we, we are also uh, a little bit involved with the Shambly Chamber, much smaller organization, but, but uh, we've 
done some uh, planting trees and things of that nature. And yeah. we've done something with uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium has an Earth Day event every year, and we get our guys, and we go roll up our sleeves, and we you know, do improvements on a park and things of that nature. Um, we we try to stay plugged in with the community in every way we can. It's uh you know it's important, and we're we're really big on on culture. We think that culture is everything. And yeah, well, you're doing something right to, to grow the business as quickly as you have. And I have to ask, do you have do you have like a, a suite or anything at Mercedes Benz Stadium? <laughs> Is we, that part of the deal? It, well, it actually, no, that was not part of the deal. Because if you say yes, <laughs> you and I are becoming best friends. That was not part of the deal. However, there, you know, we, we were um, we were in the process of uh, it, it securing some season tickets, and then and then COVID changed, <laughs> yeah. changed things. So. And now you'll be like the rest of us watching on TV yeah. while they play the games. It looks like pretty much. Yep, yep. I think so. Well, that's great. Well, Stephen, for those companies out there, and I guess the business, does the size of the business matter as far as who you can do business with? Absolutely not. Okay, no. so if you're a small business or the biggest business and they don't get much bigger than uh, the stadiums and everything here, uh, how can they find out more and, and contact you and, and reach out to, to hopefully uh, use Level 7 facility services? Our website's the best way to go. Um, it's l7fs.com, the letter L, number 7, F as in facilities, S is in services.com and you can find whatever you're looking for there so and your service area includes greater metro we are incidentally uh, uh, expanding into tampa because there's we have a large customer it's conlin company is building um amazon fulfillment centers mm -hmm. and, and we've been working with them with disinfectant crews working on site around the clock and they're coming out of the ground on one in tampa and so we're, we're following them down there so uh, not that you're going to have any Tampa listeners, but <laughs> right. But y hey, you're on the internet. You yeah. never know. Hello, Tampa. <laughs> but yeah, hey, Tampa. But no, pr primarily Greater Metro is that's our that's our I stomping gotcha. grounds. Yep. Okay, Amazon. I think I've heard of them. Yeah, I think I've heard of that yeah. company. Yep. <laughs> well, Stephen, you are a, a success story. Obviously, con continued success. Congratulations on Thanks, the growth. Mike. It's been awesome. And uh, when you do get that suite, uh, you know where I work yes, now. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Business Radio X. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Stephen Tomlinson, the managing partner with Level 7 Facility Services. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Our next guest here on the Voice of Business podcast, brought to you by the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce, is Jamie Jones with Duke Realty. Hi there, Jamie. Hi. Great to see you. Duke Realty, I mean, I think everybody's, I mean, that's a pretty big company. It's, you didn't start this company, but it's it's huge. So, Tell us about Duke Realty, and, and you're a uh, senior marketing manager, so you want to get the good word out about the great work you guys do. Right, correct, yes. So, so you're in the right place. <laughs> right, well, thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it. Uh, Duke Realty, we're a commercial real estate developer. Um, we're actually the largest, this is a mouthful, the largest industrial pure play domestic industrial REIT. So what does that mean? So... Um, as you just referred to, Amazon's a big company. Um, we build those types of facilities. So we have over 156 million square feet across the country. We're in 20 of the top uh, distribution markets. And to dial that in a little bit, right here in Atlanta, we have 13 million square feet. And 2 million of that is right here in Gwinnett County. So to be clear, for those folks that say, oh, Duke Realty, they sell homes, they sell houses. <laughs> No, you're a much bigger yes. player than that. Yes, industrial buildings. We get, because um, we're, in, like I said, in 20 markets across the country. We're in North Carolina, so we get Duke University. We get Duke Mayonnaise. We get Duke Energy. Did you <laughs> say no. Duke Mayonnaise? Yes, there's a Duke Mayonnaise. So, no, we are Duke Realty, industrial developer. Okay, okay. And as senior marketing manager, what is your position entail? What does your day-to-day -day job look like? Um, well, gosh, one of the reasons I love it is every day is a little bit different. Um, like I said, we're in 20 markets, so I support um, four or five of those markets. Do you and travel a lot? I do. Well, pre-COVID. <laughs> pre-COVID, I did. Every um, answer today is pre-COVID. Right, exactly. Yeah. PC. Um, so, yeah, I used to travel like two to three weeks a month, but um, I support the Northeast and um, down along the East Coast. But then in addition to that, I do some of our corporate initiatives. I handle our national um, conference strategy and then some other um, entertainment events. What makes you guys different from other businesses or companies that kind of do the commercial real estate that you do as well? What makes Duke stand out? Um, well, I would say a number of things makes Duke stand out. Um, we have a very, very strong culture very strong business ethic, code of conduct, 
we do what we say we're going to do. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's, becoming, that's becoming a theme today. <laughs> Very reliable, trustworthy um, in, in relationships. I mean, I guess echoing what other people have said, relationships are so important in doing what you say you're going to do. How is the company growing? How are you finding new projects? Um, is it word of mouth a lot of it? or? Uh, well, I mean, we, yes, we have a lot of repeat business. Um, we do build a suit facilities as well as speculative development. And we're also vertically integrated. And what that means is we have in-house construction, development, leasing, property management. We own our buildings. We're a long-term owner. So we don't build them and flip them or, you know, sell them. So um, I think the fact that we are a long-term owner means that we really take pride in our buildings and we find the best locations and take good care of them so you know people want to be tenants in our facilities so so you build them i i know a guy that can clean them and do the janitorial you know, work yes yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> i think this might lead to something <laughs> can, can you build us a really big cool business radio x studio somewhere I, i'm sure we could <laughs> oh we, we've got to talk Again, the reason you're here, just like the other guests, is you're a member of the Gwinnett Chamber. How long have you guys been members, and, and why did Duke Realty decide to become a member? Well, well, that is interesting. Um, Duke Realty's been around for almost 50 years now. We were started in the Midwest in Indianapolis, and we entered the Atlanta market through an acquisition of the Weeks Corporation, and that was back in 1999. So I am going to assume that they were a member of the chamber because our relationship goes back 46 years. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we're a long-term member of the chamber. And um, gosh, we now we're doing industrial buildings. But before that, um, our business model was a little bit different. We did um, office and some other aspects as well. We actually built the chamber building. Really? So, yeah. So, and if you notice, one of the boardrooms is the Duke Weeks um, boardroom. So that is us, the Duke. When we acquired Weeks, we became Duke Weeks, and then eventually just Duke Royalty. I have learned so, so much today. This is very <laughs> cool. So, um, but yes, we, we are active. We're Chairman's Club members, and um, we have gotten so much out of the Chamber relationship. That's great. Let me ask you about you, Jamie. How did you end up with Duke Realty? That is so funny that you say that. It's almost like you knew, and I know you didn't. <laughs> Uh-oh, there's a story here. Yeah, so when I, I was in Florida, and I first moved up, or back up, I'm from Atlanta, but when I moved back to Atlanta, um, I was expanding our business and opening up a location in Gwinnett County. So the very first thing I did was walked into the chamber before I even had a location and, you know, talked to someone. It was Paige Havens at the time. She was the membership director. We've had her on before. I'm sure. So she is the very first person I met. And just from then, with my own business, it, it was amazing. I got involved. I was an ambassador. Everything Nancy talked about, um, it was wonderful. And then I, I sold my business. And I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. And um, throughout that time, I had gone through leadership going at. And um, I was having lunch with somebody at the 1818 Club. And I ran into somebody that I went through leadership going at with, Carrie Armstrong, who I'm sure a lot of people know. Lo and behold, Carrie worked for Duke. And one thing led to another. And that is actually how I wound up at Duke Royalty. So give the, give the chamber credit <laughs> absolutely I, i've got to ask as we found out before the show we were actually born in the same city so you're from atlanta mm -hmm. uh because you moved to atlanta when you were young much like i did where did you end up going to high school because if we went to the same high school i'm gonna like freak out on the air no i, I actually went to a different i went away to high school so okay. I, went, I went to darlington in rome georgia oh my god you are no oh my god <laughs> No, my best friend went to Darlington. Really? Yeah, I didn't go to Darlington, uh, but my best friend did. Wow, it's a small world. <laughs> it is. So um, what advice would you give to new chamber members that are joining? Because you've spoken highly about the chamber, how it's worked out for you. What advice would you give to new chambers as well? I know some of our other guests gave some advice as well, but what would you say to someone that's thinking about joining the chamber? Um, well, the first thing I would say is if you are a business located in Gwinnett County, you do business with somebody in Gwinnett County or you want to do business with somebody in Gwinnett County, it's imperative that you become a chamber member. There's no reason uh, not to join. It, I mean, that is their mission is to grow business in Gwinnett County and, and you know, the region and give back to the community. So it, it's going to be a win-win for everyone. But 
to me, it's a no brainer. And I think everybody here has said that. Um, one thing that I, I would also say is you can't just join and expect the benefits from it. You have to be active. You have to be involved. Um, use it for the networking, show up, get the tables, see if there's something that you can sponsor that aligns with your business. Um, for instance, we sponsor the Glow Network. Um, very big initiative at Duke Realty is diversity and inclusion. We've been doing that for 16 years. It's not something recent. Um, and one of those programs that I was um, able to go through was our executive mentoring program for women or for minorities and women in our company. And from that, I met somebody from another city I'd never met before, and we founded the Duke Realty Women's Network. So we, that was back in 2017, we put on corporate programs, but we also try and focus on local um, activities as well. So I aligned with GLOW because our mission is the same, and so we're able to you know, open up those programs to our associates. and. Even during COVID, they, um, you know, they still had the virtual programming, which we were able to open up to our entire company. So I would say get active and get involved. What, what I love about what you just said is, is even as big as Duke has grown over the years, and it's gone through some name changes as you talked about and so forth, but it's never, it's never lost its focus of giving back to the community, and you're still doing that. And to see you smile as you're talking about all of that, I can see that's close to your heart, too. It's something you really enjoy. Definitely, definitely. And on top of that, we get um, two days every year for community service. So we have a national relationship with the American Red Cross, but then we also pick a local organization. And uh, most recently, we worked with Rainbow Village with a cleanup day and um, donations there. So, yeah, very good culture. And uh, the Gwinnett Chamber allows us to align those partnerships. That's locally. perfect. Perfect. For those that would like to find out more about Duke Realty, where can they get that information? I would say to start with the website, that's um, dukerealty.com. So D-U-K-E-R-E-A-L-T-Y.com. And Jamie Jones, the Senior Marketing Manager, joining us here on the show. Jamie, great to meet you. We've made new friends here as well, both born in Massapequa, New York, both of us moving away when we were about two years old. So neither of us really knowing much about Massapequa, <laughs> but we were born there. Right. <laughs> so, so great to meet you, and, and thanks for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. So a big thank you to uh, Jamie Jones with Duke Realty and Nancy McGill with Cartridge World Lawrenceville and Stephen Tomlinson with Level 7 Facility Services, all members and uh, and not only just members of the Gwinnett Chamber, but taking the next step in, in sponsoring events and tables and so forth with the Gwinnett Chamber as well. A quick reminder that you can listen to the show anytime by going to Business Radio X, selecting the Gwinnett Studio, and then clicking on The Voice of Business. You can also find this podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, my gosh, Spreaker, we're all over the place. So be sure to subscribe to the show as well. I want to thank my producer, Amanda. Until next time, I'm Mike, and we'll see you next time here on The Voice of Business on Business Radio X. 